So now let's talk about the anti-candida protocol. The first point I want to make to you is that it is completely impossible to completely starve candida of its nutrients. What we can do is we can minimize the nutritional supply whilst also trying to kill it. But if we starve candida, we are starving ourselves at the same time. So that is not possible. But what we want to do is limit the supply of nutrients to this fungus. And we are specifically limiting certain nutrients, certain foods that candida would normally use for its own growth and energy. At the same time, we need to be thinking about giving agents and substances that have directly anti-candida effects, so killing the candida, whilst also considering about repopulating the gut flora to override the candida and also support the immune system to stop this from causing any potential future problems. So first of all, the foods that you need to eliminate will be any simple, any refined carbohydrates. So basically, any sugar, trying to actually cut out most fruits as well, or at least absolutely minimise fruits with a rich or a high sugar content. Alcohol as well, because most alcohols are packed with sugar. And also various grains. At the same time, you need to make sure that the patient has cut out dairy. Dairy contains a sugar called lactose. Lactose is a double sugar, so it's two sugar units joined together. And so this will feed candida. Candida loves lactose. We also need to make sure that we eradicate any foods that have a high fungus or basically a high yeast or mold content, which includes things like cheeses, some alcohols, and also things like dried fruit and peanuts, which harbor lots of uh, fungus. Instead, we want to incorporate green vegetables, prebiotic foods, so fermented foods, so bacteria rather than fungus. And if somebody's eating meat, it needs to be organic meat. At the same time, we can incorporate antifungal agents. Now, one of the best agents that I would recommend for candida would be coconut oil. Now, coconut oil contains a, a substance known as caprylic acid and caprylic acid is directly antifungal, so that will kill candida. So coconut oil should be the main oil of choice, along with oregano oil. You can also use oregano on its own, but oregano oil is really a fantastic agent to break down the candida. Oregano is actually one of the single best antiparasitic agents that, our, that we have in nature around us. It doesn't matter whether it's a fungus or whether it's an, a, a different parasite, oregano is fantastic. So use oregano oil, and you can actually buy supplements of oregano oil as well. You can also use apple cider vinegar. So trying to get somebody just maybe di slightly diluting apple cider vinegar with some water and ingesting that. We can also think about turmeric because turmeric has anti-candida properties as does garlic. Garlic is very good with its anti-candida effects. You can also try using grape, um, grapefruit seed extract. And if somebody ever has candida as an infection in their mouth, which is also known as thrush, then you can get them to use grapefruit seed extract mixed with water and use that as a mouthwash. You can then improve the influx of good healthy microbes, so good bacteria, that will improve the immune system. It will also occupy those spaces where candida is trying to live. And at the same time, we've got to support the body, we've got to support the immune system, which means we need lots of rest. We need lots of sleep, good quality sleep, seven to nine hours. We need to make sure that somebody is using, doing breathing exercises. We need to also ensure that a patient is trying as best as possible to minimize those little stresses in their life. And then we can think about things like acupuncture. Acupuncture is fantastic for candida. It can help with, by reducing that optimal environment for candida to flourish. 
We can also think about using homeopathy. We can talk about, we can think about using herbs that also promote the immune system and also kill candida. So whilst candida can be quite stubborn, and quite frankly, the dietary approach to getting rid of candida is not an easy approach to follow at all. One bit of advice I would give you is that if you're advising somebody to follow an anti-candida protocol, just tell them that in the first week or two, as their body is now changing their metabolism, they will probably feel very tired, very weak, um, or they may feel very weak anyway. And so it's just useful to educate that if they can just overcome that initial transition in metabolism, they will often then start to become quite accustomed. And in fact, a lot of the people I know that have gone on an anti-candida protocol often keep many aspects of this beyond the full resolution of this condition. The last point I just want to mention is in terms of diagnosing candida in the digestive tract and specifically in the intestines, the single best way to do this is with a comprehensive stool analysis. That really is one of the best ways of picking this up. So again, this is when you might think about referring somebody on for more specific testing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe below so you don't miss any future content. To learn more about CNM or its courses, head to www.naturopathy-uk.com.